Praise ye the Lord, Temple Church of Christ. Praise ye the Lord, Temple Church of Christ. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is faithful and he's worthy to be praised. Give him glory with your mouth. Give him praises with your hands. Acknowledge the Most High God. Because if it had not been for God on our side, where would we be? It's his mercy, it's his grace, it's his loving kindness. He's faithful and he's so true. To God be the glory. Amen. God bless you. My name is Nicole Thomas and I'm here to do the announcements this morning. But before the reading of the announcements, are there any first time guests here in the sanctuary this morning? There are no first time guests here in the sanctuary, so it is all TCOC. So to all of our online viewers, God bless you and thank you for tuning in to Temple Church of Christ. We're located at 27 Dayton Street in the heart of the city of St. Louis, where our pastor is no other than Suffolk Bishop Ron E. Stevens and First Lady, Lady Doretta D. Stevens. So God bless you. Our order of service will be as follows, the reading of the announcements, and immediately following the reading of the announcements, we will have prayer rendered by Evangelist Michelle Bailey. And as soon as Evangelist Michelle Bailey leads us in prayer, we will hear from the beautiful voices of our music ministry. Amen. The announcements read for upcoming events for Sunday, September 18th, and all the times are Central Standard Times. This year's theme is Winning Souls for Jesus. The mission statement at TCLC is that we swim. We serve, share, worship, win souls, intercede, and make disciples for Christ. Some of the ways we swim are in the following announcements. Join us for our regular weekly services, Sunday morning worship services, in person only at 9 a.m., and in person and online at 11 a.m., Monday night prayer at 7 p.m., Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. in person and online, and the Victorious Living Teleconference class, which takes place every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. with Evangelist Cheryl Oliver and Minister Angela Pearson. Everyone is welcome to join the Sisterhood Zoom meeting, which takes place Tuesday, September 20th at 6 p.m. with TCOC speaker Evangelist Cynthia Matthew Snow. The topic, A Heart for Winning Souls. Effective October 2nd, TCOC will return to one service at 10.30 a.m. Amen. To God be the glory. Also, Christian Education will relaunch its classes at 9 a.m. Be sure to RSVP your attendance using the link on the TCOC app. For the Sunday school classes starting on October 2nd, there will be books that will be required for the students. The books are available at the TCOC bookstore starting Sunday, September 25th. The book prices range from $5 to $10. Be sure to purchase your book. Registration continues for the TCOC Marriage Conference on Saturday, October 15th, hosted by Pastor and Lady Stevens with Pastor Raymond and Kathy Horry. The registration fee per couple is now $60 until October 2nd. Register via cash, check, or Cash App at dollar sign TCOC Sisterhood. Be sure to indicate marriage conference in the memo. Young married couples are also invited to attend. Please note that registration is also included in the start time. The conference runs from 8.30 a.m. until 3 p.m. Also, join us as we continue to read scriptures throughout September. We're reading 1 Chronicles chapters 1 through 15 for the remaining of the month. Also, for those that are participating in the Branson trip, 
Going to See Jesus Live, sponsored by Minister Angela Pearson and Dr. Sarah, Dr. Sandra Fields. This is the itinerary. The bus will be boarding at 6.30 a.m. from this location. That's Temple Church of Christ, 2741 Dayton Street. And the bus will depart on time at 7 a.m., not 7.07 nor 7.15, but 7 a.m. So please be prompt and on time. Amen. All of these announcements can be found on Facebook, the TCOC app, and the TCOC website. They're also sent via Faith Team text messages. Please check all those modes of communication for all of the TCOC events. That concludes the reading of the announcements. I ask that you please stand as Minister Michelle Bailey lead us in prayer. Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning. As we stand... As we go before the throne, as to we'll draw our minds in, and then we will focus on him and take our minds off ourselves. Amen. Amen. We'll bow down heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this day because you are great and you are greatly to be praised. But ye are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that he may show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God, we ask that your peculiar people, that they will embrace who it is that you have called them to be. Some of you have called to be teachers. Some of you have called to be worshipers. Some of you have called to be prophetess. Some of you have called to be pastors. God, let them embrace who it is that you have called them to be for the edification of your body. God, we thank you for the planting of your gifts in the Temple Church of Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that you have called us to be peculiar. You have called each one of us to be unique. We don't have to clone. We don't have to be like anyone else because it's what you have placed down on the inside of us that will draw others unto Christ. To this day, God, we said thank you for making us a royal priesthood. Thank you for making us a chosen generation. Thank you, Lord God, for equipping us with the gifts in which we need for such a time as this. Now, God, I ask that you would bless your people and that you would show them who they are in you, that they may walk in you, that they may talk in you, that they may share the good news of you to one another. And this day, God, we will lift you up for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do in the lives of your people. I ask that you bless your people this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody lift your voice and just say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It feels so good to be in the presence of God on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This song is just a simple reminder to stop making our issues and our problems big. But remember who God is. Our God is big and he's in control. Amen. Hallelujah.
victory, I've got it. I thank God, I got it. Victory, victory, I got it. I thank God, I thank God, I got it. Victory, I got it. I thank God, I got it. I woke up with victory, I got it.
physically everything on the inside of me bows down I bow down emotionally I bow down I bow down spiritually every fear every insecurity every issue it bows down to the presence of the Lord Woo, God every war every battle every test every trial every issue it it bows down to the presence of the Lord you're going through something it's got to bow down to the presence of the Lord bow down bow down and worship it bow down bow down so come and bow down and worship down and worship him we're here to work. bow down so bow bow down That's why we're here this morning. We're here to worship Him. We're here to worship Him. Enter in. Enter in. Oh, oh. Sweet. Sweet perfume. 
this awesome presence. His awesome presence fills this room. Fills this room. Consuming fire. It will burn up. It will burn it up. Sweet perfume. This awesome presence fills this. Worship him. So come and, and, and bow down. Bow down. You've got the praise. Celebrate him. Worship him. Worship him. Let's worship him. We're coming to this house to worship him. I said we're coming to this house to worship him. Thank you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. He's here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, he's here. It's our responsibility to let go. We've got to forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. Bow down. We bow down, Jesus. He's so great, he's awesome, he's powerful. There's none like him. Bow down. My fears, my insecurities, my questions, it bows down. Thank you, Father. Give God a hand and praise and one more time for his goodness and his mercy. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We come into the house today to worship him. We come into this house to worship him. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Worship has to do with the worthiness. It's the worth. It's the value of God. And we worship him. We identify who he is. Something on the inside begins to adore the God on the outside. Ooh, something on the inside bows down to his presence. It's inside out. Something on the inside celebrates his character. Something on the inside devotes itself to him and him only. Something on the inside exalts him. Something on the inside forgets about myself and I begin to concentrate on him. Something on the inside lifts him up. Something on the inside gives him the glory. Something on the inside magnifies him. He's greater than your, I don't know what, whatever your troubles he is, God is greater than your troubles. He's greater than your trials. He's greater than your tribulations. He's greater than the lion in the lion's den. He's greater than the fiery furnace. He's greater than Goliath. He's greater than the Babylonians. He's greater than the Assyrians. Nobody like him. He deserves to be praised. He deserves to be worshipped. Oh, come on and worship him. We worship him because of who he is. We worship him because of his character. We worship him because of his isness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. We're coming to this house to worship Him. I said we come to worship Him. On, on one such occasion, Jesus is in the wilderness and Satan says, Worship me. Bow down and worship me. 
I'll give you all these things if you'd worship me. It's what the enemy wants. He wants our worship. But we have got to make it up in our minds. The one thing you're not going to get, you're not going to get my worship. Woo! I will worship him. Can you lift your hands and worship him one more time? Can we clap our hands and worship him? Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the praise team. Y'all did a wonderful job. Thank you. And to our musicians, thank you so much for your ministry today. And if all of our family members of Temple Church of Christ, we want to say welcome and to all of our guests and friends from far and near, we want to say welcome to you. Welcome to the Temple Church of Christ. We're absolutely honored and delighted to have you. And those on social media who are watching now, we want to say praise the Lord and welcome to the Temple Church of Christ. Amen. The best church on this side of the Mississippi. Amen. We thank God that you have, you have joined us. There is no better place to be on a Sunday morning than be in the house of the Lord. There is no better place. I just can't think of a better place to be than be in the house of God to worship him and to praise him and to give him all the glory to his name. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. When you make God a priority, things line up. Amen. Come into the sanctuary as a priority. But two or three are gathered together in his name. God is in the midst of us. He dwells in the midst of praise and we come together to praise him. We can expect God to do some things. You can come in this place, in this building, sick and leave healed. You can come in here confused and leave out with clarity. Because in the presence of the Lord, anything can happen. That's why the psalmist says, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because anything can happen. And God will meet you at the level of your expectation. I'll say that again. God will meet you at the level of your expectation. If you expect God to do some great things, he's able to do great things. The scripture makes it plain. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. He will meet you at your level of expectation. He said, be it done according to your faith, according to your level of expectation. Jesus went to a city once and he couldn't do any work because the expectations were so low and very few people were healed and he said because of little faith they had little expectation but today you know what I got great expectation I have great expectation that God is going to do a new thing amen can we clap our hands in advance of what he's going to do amen praise the Lord to everybody we're absolutely delighted that you're here today we're going to get right into the word of the Lord I feel inspired Thank you for the music ministry. It has been inspiring and uplifting, and we thank you. Amen. This morning, I call your attention to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, as it's found in chapter number five, it is a, um, a chapter in which we also find the Beatitudes. And today, I'm just going to just basically read one, actually two scriptures, one from Matthew and one from Colossians. And I hope today that from the message, that somebody's heart, from this message, that somebody's heart will be touched. I pray today this won't be a waste of your time. That came, I came to the service and I got something for my soul. I pray today that the word of God will not return void this morning. But it will, but it will, it will accomplish everything that is designed to accomplish. So I pray that you leave fulfilled and directed and you'll get insight. And an aha moment and an opening of the eye. Because this word is alive. This word is not like the St. Louis Post's patch. It's not like Ebony Magazine. The word of God is a living, it's a living book. Ooh, it's alive, it's quick, it's living, it's powerful, and it can alter our lives at the level of our expectation. Book of Matthew, chapter number five, verse number 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have... If the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? 
it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Father, we thank you for the word today. Now, God, we ask you to speak to us. The man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of your mouth. We need to hear from you because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Talk to us. Talk to us. Give us clarity of mind. Give us direction. Give us insight. And let this hour of our time be a great investment of our time. We need to hear from you, Jesus. Take these clay lips today. Let them speak clear for the building up of our faith. Heal and deliver. And speak to us. Give us direction. And not only that, we ask you to touch someone's heart to the extent that they will say, I want to be saved. I want to be changed. I want to give my life to Christ. As we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our message today is titled, How to Get, How to get the Salt Out of the Shaker. How to Get the Salt Out of the Shaker. This Jesus in this text is very clear. It gives us clarity as to as to who we are. I believe in the body of Christ. There should be no identity issues. There shouldn't be. Because Jesus tells us who we are. He says that you are the salt. You're the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Not that you're becoming the salt of the earth. But you are the salt of the earth. Jesus uses something that's very common to the people. People understood salt. He declares them to be the salt. You are the salt of the earth. This enemy who seeks to confuse us as to who we are. But Jesus seeks to give us clarity. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you think you're a failure, you're going to act like you're a failure. If you think that you're a loser, you're going to talk like a loser. You're going to think like a loser because that's how you think. Your thought life drives everything. That's why you've got to control your thoughts. Apostle Paul writes to the church at Philippi. He says six things. He says, what sort of things be true? What sort of things be honest? What sort of things be, be just? What sort of things be pure? Whatsoever things be lovely, whatsoever things be of good report. He said, if there be any virtue, this word virtue is moral energy. If, there be, if it energizes you, if, if it has any praise, he says, I want you to think on these things. Who you are is predicated on what you think about. Your, your thought life is so critical. And if you can govern your thought life, you can govern your whole world. So Jesus gives us clarity. You are salt. You are salt. Back in the day, people used to be paid with salt. This is where the word salary comes from salt, the Latin word. It derives, the Latin word derives into uh, to salary. It comes from the word salt because when people did work, they would get pieces of salt as their salary. This is why the phrase we hear sometimes, you ain't worth your salt. It, it has to do with your payment, is salary. So salt is something that's understood as being something very, at that time, very, very crucial at that time to have salt. Salt has many benefits. And we are the salt of the earth, and we need to understand our benefits. But let's understand characteristics and attributes of salt. Salt is a preservative. Now, one, back in the day when they didn't have uh, refrigerators and icebox and things like that, they would take salt. So if a guy goes out, kills an animal or a deer or a rabbit, he would, he would preserve it in a box full of salt. And the salt pulls out the bacteria and germs and keeps the meat fresh, actually, in salt. It is a preservative. Number two, and I'll go through this real quickly, salt is flavors. It flavors your food. It's a seasoning. 
So when you go to McDonald's or you go to Burger King or wherever you might want to go or Red Lobster, you might put a little salt on your fries for flavor, right? It's also, it melts ice. That word, the word, it's, it's a word there that means ice. Dicer is, is ice. So in the winter, I would take, I'd take salt and I'd throw salt on my driveway because it melts salt. Salt is used for sore throats. If you have a sore throat, get some water, put some salt in it, and gargle and watch your sore throat, the, the, the sore and the pain decrease. Salt is used for cleansing. Salt is used for muscle cramps. It aids in hydration, balances electrolytes. Salt is used to prevent muscle cramping, helps nervous systems. And the good thing about salt, salt is expense, it's inexpensive. It doesn't take much uh, to buy salt. It's very, very cheap. It helps in digestion. Number 13, can increase your appetite, helps remove toxin. Salt is used to purify. It's a purifier, and salt can make you thirsty. Oh, I could go on with this list. I could say a lot of things about salt, but I want you to understand a few things about salt. Sodium chloride. It, it helps in many, many kinds of ways. And my message today is how to get out of the, out of the salt shaker. And I brought with me today, I brought, I, I brought a salt shaker. And my thought is today is God is saying to you that you are the salt of the earth. But not just the salt of the earth, but God is saying to you that you are the salt of the earth. So you've got to come out of the salt shaker. Come on, somebody. We, we got people who have salt, but it's, you're not salt. You're not, you're not in, impacting the world. Th that your salt is still in your salt shake. God. So we're going to find out today how I can get this salt outside of my salt shaker. But before I can get the salt outside of my salt shaker, I've got to get the salt inside of my shaker. Oh, come on. I've got to put it on the inside before it can come out. Can I get an amen from somebody? Uh, we can shout all day long. We can praise. We can run around the church. But there's nothing in you is not going to come out. God help us, Holy Ghost. Keep salt in yourselves. In order for you to be the salt of the world, something has to happen to your thought life. You got to have some salty thoughts, thoughts that preserve, salts that are flavored, salts that can cleanse, salt, salts that purify, salt that keeps you thirsty. It's your thought life. Having, having thoughts that are salty, salts that are full of flavor, it's got to be on the inside before it comes on the outside. Watch out what you hang, watch out who you hang out with because evil communications corrupt good manners. Don't mess up my salt, baby. Your thought life creates your actions. How you think determines how you act. And if you think salty, you're going to act salty. That's why I got to stay in the word. Because what a thought is, a thought is a concept. It is a, it is a picture in my mind that inspires me. So I got to keep my thoughts right. Because my thought life will drive my actions. And my actions are salty because my thought life is salty. Oh, God help my thought life, Jesus. And it's a world today that's trying to steal our thought life. All the media, all of the Instagram, all of the Facebook, all of the um, social media platforms, their objective is to take our thoughts and make them unsalty. You see, when a person is, is salty, they are influential. When you are salty, you have influence. What has happened to our churches? We, we have lost influence. We, we have lost some of the saltiness that God has put in us. But I come tonight and say, we're getting our salt back. I'm getting my salt back. 
because we have we are the answer to the to the problems of this world is through the believers of this world that we are the salt of the earth that we can change this world we can change communities we are more than conquerors we are royal priesthood we are chosen generation we're not the tail but the head and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world oh god is god before us who can be against us you got to know who you are i am the salt of this earth i don't run from devils but i cast out devils the bible says resist the devil and he shall flee from you don't you know who i am i am a child of god i've been purchased with a price and i know god has a plan for me Oh, I got to get my thoughts right. No, I'm not a loser. No, I'm not defeated. I know who I am. I'm a child of a God. I'm Holy Ghost field. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm the light of the world. God's got a plan for me. It's my fault life. It's my fault life. If you think you're failure, you're going to act like a failure. You think you're defeated, you're going to, you're going to talk like a dear defeated. You're going to act like you're defeated. You got to control your fault life. All life controls my actions, and my actions de de determine my habits. You see, when I keep doing something over and over and over and over, uh, back to the next slide on there, keep salt in yourselves. The habits, my habits, my habits come through my through actions, doing something over and over, and to becomes a habit. I don't have to think about it anymore. It's just what I do because of my thoughts that drives my action, that drives my habit. And now my character has become salty. And the reason why my character has so much flavor because my character is so unique is because of my thought life oh thank God for the secret place of the most high but he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high is able to impact his thought life so my thoughts affect my my actions and my actions affect my habits and my habits affect my character and my character determines my eternal destiny I believe the church can have a tremendous impact in this world, in this city, in the Jeff Vandaloo area in St. Louis City. If we understood who we are, we are the salt of the earth. We have influence. We can influence things. We can influence folks on our job, folks in our home. We have influence. I'm excited. A Christian's influence salt is no good if it never leaves the salt shaker in my hand I have a salt shaker and it's no good if it never leaves the salt shaker I don't care how many testimonies you have if it doesn't come out of your mouth it's no good I don't care how dynamic your prayer life is if, if it didn't come out of your mouth something's wrong God's gonna give you a word and it's for you to give it to somebody else it's got to come out of you somebody how some way oh god help me death and life is in the power of the tongue oh god lord i really want to change work on your thought life work on your thought life. how are you how are you supposed to do that you're supposed to read the word of god you got to spend spend some time and read his word blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law of death he meditate day and night it's his thought life oh god give us the discipline i come against laziness i come against people who don't have the discipline and i call lord go and inspire us lord to spend some time with you so you can get into my faults i got four things i'm gonna get out of your way come, coming out of the salt shaker how to get how to get out of the salt shaker I'll give you four words so the acronym is salt the first word is s s here's how we do it season speech check this out Colossians 4 and 5 walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the times verse 6 let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man if we're going to change the world, it starts with seasoned speech. Paul writes to Church of Colossae and says, let your speech uh, be always, let it be seasoned with, 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 with salt. Man, put some grace on your tongue. Take the curse words out. Stop being so snappy and so bitter. 
Oh, God, if you're going to be a witness to somebody, it starts with seasoned speech. It's how you talk. And no matter how frustrated you are down here, by the time it comes out of your mouth, you can put some salt on it. You, you may be frustrated and angry and bitter and ticked off and aggravated, but by the time it goes up the suffocus and out of your lips, it's got some salt on it. It's not mean and bitter and snappy and nasty and hard. Oh, God. Paul says if you, if you want to be effective in ministry, you want to be effective as a person, you've got to put some salt on your speech. Your speech always be seasoned with salt. We talked about salt. It's a preservative. It's flavor. It's nice. It brings life. It creates thirst. Oh, God. No wonder the Bible says that a soft answer turneth away wrath. How you respond to someone, it, it, it turns away wrath. We just can't say what we want to say when we're trying to be a witness. Well, he made me mad. I just had to tell him. Well, no, 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 you didn't have to. You didn't, you didn't have to. You had, you had a choice. Well, he made me mad. He cursed at me. I cursed back. He snapped. I snapped back. No, 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 no. The Bible says let your speech be seasoned with salt. Say, God love you, baby girl. God loves you. Praying for you. God be with you. It's not an eye for an eye or a two for a tooth. But we're going to be witnesses in the city, in this area. It starts with how we speak. Stop being so snappy and hard with your words. Ask God for some grace, God. Put season on my words. Thank you, Jesus. The, the, the A, we, this word, S-A-L-T. The A in this word we find is that we find an answer. Look at the text. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. That you, I got to answer. I'm prepared to answer you. Not only had there's a tonality, right? Because when you speak, it's not always how you say it is what you say. <laughs> it's not just what you say is how you say it. Uh, so I got to say it right. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. So I got to say it right and I got to give an answer that makes sense. I just can't snap at you and curse you. You know, just say something ignorant and doesn't make sense. But the Bible says, eh, but you ought to know how to answer every man that comes your way. And you don't know, you don't owe everybody an answer. If people say things, things to you, you don't have to give them an answer. I'll talk, get back with you later. See me tomorrow. But when you do answer them, you should be prepared to give them an answer that is acceptable and salty. But the answer has influence. The answer has impact. People don't want to come to church because they can't find salty people in a church. The people are mean and they're, and they're bitter and they're snappy. They're cold. They, they sit back. But God is saying, I want salt in the church. And if nobody speaks to you, you need to speak to them and show, here's how it works, baby girl. Let me show you some salt. Thank you, Father. God says, you are the salt of the earth. You cannot predict the events that you're going to encounter. On the screen, you'll see a formula E plus R plus zero. Oh, not O. E plus R plus O. It is, it is, it is, it is a formula that helps us understand how salt, the salt works. I cannot determine what's going to happen tomorrow or next week. I cannot determine my events in my life. I can't determine whether the company's going to close down. I can't determine if I'm going to get a good boss or a bad boss. If this one leaves, I can't determine what's going to happen. Life is so unpredictable. And you can't, can't, tell, can't tell what's going to happen from one month to another month. But in this formula, I can determine my response. I may not be able to determine the event that will happen in my life, but I sure enough can determine how I'm going to respond. We have power on how we're going to respond. 
Pastor Ron, we can determine whether I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in thee, O oh Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I know how to respond in the midst of my trials and tribulations. I can't determine the outcome, but I ain't going to curse you out. I'm not going to pull out my pistol. I'm not going to put you in your head. I'm not going to call 9911 because I know how I'm going to respond. When you, are, when you are salty, you have a predetermined behavior. You have intentional behavior. You know how you're going to respond because your thoughts are salty. Oh, God. And, be, and because of your thoughts are, are, are salty, your lifestyle, your character is salty. And the way that I respond, I respond back with a salty taste, a salty look, a salty flavor. That's how I respond. So as we deal with life, what do we have control over? Not over the events. I don't have control over the outcome. I don't know how things are going to work out. My son is on drugs. My, my, my spouse has walked out on me. This has happened. That has happened. But I can tell you how I'm going to respond. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm not going to lean on, all my, uh, lean on my own understanding. In all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge him. And he's going to direct my path. Boy, that's a salty response. Ooh. That's salty. Salty. The word is looking for us to be salty. If things don't go right, we, are, we still got a praise on our lips. We still got to thank you, Jesus, in our lips. Uh, Lord, I still want to thank you. still want to give you praise and glory. Nobody like you. You're king of kings and Lord of lords and God. Ooh, that's salty. I give you the praise. I'm not going to let the devil steal my praise. I come to bless you. I come to lift you up. Good times, bad times. I, I just give you praise and glory. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord, it shall be praised. Some trust in chariots and others in horses, but I'm going to remember the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run to it and they all say baby I got some salt in me the salt is the word of God on the inside that's keeping me alive Woo. the salt is keeping joy joy builds in my soul that's why I got salt because I've been just meditating in his word. I've just been confessing his word. I've been saying what he says about me. That's what I am. I, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I, I am his righteousness. Oh yeah, I am the temple of the living God. I know who I am. I, I'm the salt and you can't take my saltiness away. If we're going to have an impact on our community, people got to see the church as being influential, being salty. Look at the L in the word salt. I give you another word from this text. Let your speech always be with grace. Season with salt. Ooh, love and grace. It's what you say. It's what determines our relationship. It's how you talk. It's your, it's your language that gives you away. And what comes out of your mouth is the only way that I can judge how we're coming along. Speak to me with some grace. Like you had some grace. Give me the grace that somebody gave you. Give me the love that someone showed to you. Give me the compassion that somebody showed you. Speak to me with some grace. Ooh, we forget sometimes what, how people have loved us or how God has loved us. And the love that he has given us, we owe it to somebody else. Oh, God, I can forgive you because of what he did for me. I can let it go when I think of Calvary, when I think of the blood, when I think of where I was and the rascal I was and all messed up and all jacked up and on the streets with the pimps. And I remember what he did for me. And because when I think about how much he loves me, oh, it's easy for me to love you. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and, and all that he has done for me, it's easy for me to love you when I think what he brought me out of the miry clay. I can love you. I can love you. I can love you. We have forgotten what Christ has done for us. We've gotten so satisfied in our little churches. We come in here think we're so saved and sanctified, but had it not been for the mercies of God, it's of God's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. And truth be told, if God wanted to find something wrong with you, Tim, he could find something. If God would run an audit on your behavior, if God would run the audit on your fault life, I promise you, he'll find something. He'll find something. Oh, yeah, all 
of our righteousness is as filthy rags. If God had to run an order, he had to check you out, baby. He would find some stuff with your self-righteous self. You think you're so holy and so all of that in a bag of chips. And so now you don't talk to people about Christ because you got it going on. You a bag of chips and all of that. No, you're not. You are broken and weary and sad and lonely and you need Jesus really in your life. Having a form of godliness but denying the power there, thereof. Oh, God, make the churches salty. Ooh, back in the day, the church was salty. People come in the church and just get the Holy Ghost, walk in the church and Holy Ghost just fall upon them. Church was so salty. Sinners came in, they could feel the anointing in the house, just salty. The praising team started preaching, a singer and the preacher can't preach because there's just so much salt in the sanctuary. And the choir goes to another level. The praise team gets so rich and so thick that I can't preach because it's so, oh God, take us back with the salt. Take us back to the salt that cleanses and purifies and opens up the door. So let your speech be our way with grace. God put some grace on my language. Is what you say is what determines who you are. Again, I say death and life is in the power of the tongue. You watch out what you say. God, give me grace on my lips. We want to see when see when souls when see souls one is what we say. Tell them that God loves them. That God cares. Allowing us to redeem the times. Look at the T in this word, salt. Colossians says, walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Walk in wisdom. Those who are ignorant, those who are intentionally stupid. Walk, walk in wisdom towards them that are without. How? I'm redeeming, I'm changing the time. I'm affecting the time. Oh, God. We, we, we have the answer is here in the church. It's not the politicians that have the answers or the educators in the colleges and universities or the social workers. The answer is in the church. We can redeem. We can change the time. And it starts with the salt. The influence of the church is how we open up our mouths and we speak and we have influence. Whew. I got some salt here, and it's here to design to have influence. It's here, it's here to have influence. But how do we get it out of the bottle, Stevens? I'm glad that you asked. See, salt is good, but if the salt has lost its taste, next, next slide, how shall its saltiness be resorted? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. Who, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. When the salt loses its savor, it becomes sand. It becomes sand. But somehow we've got to find a way how uh, to get the salt out of the salt shaker. And let me show you how I think this ought to be done. In order for the salt to come out of the salt shaker, pulls Positionally, we got to change the position of the salt. The salt must move to a different position so that it can come out. Oh God, I've got to change my position. I know that you have been comfortable in your denomination, in your, your organization, in, in your church, but God's got to turn some stuff over and he's got to shake you a little bit. Oh God, help me, Holy God. It is God who's got to turn some things upside down to move you from carnal to spiritual. Uh, I want to move you from I'm fleshly thinking and I want to flip you over so something can come out of you that's why some of you all are going through some stuff I'm trying to turn your world over uh, it's Jesus who meets with Peter and says Simon Simon behold Satan hath desired to sift you like wheat but I pray for you that your faith fails not and oh by the way Peter I know you're going to deny me on three occasions but when you 
are converted when you when you are your thinking is turned upside down you're going to strengthen the brethren there's something on the inside of you that's going to come out but there's got to be a change in your position you've been too comfortable in the same position I've got to turn some things around so some things can come out of you oh God oh God you're wondering why you're going through some more things and going through some tests it is God that's pulling some salt out of you you don't know but people are watching you as your world is turned upside down and while people are watching you being flipped from one side to the another uh, you are passing out salt uh, and you don't know what you are doing uh, you are evidence that the word of God is working on the inside uh, I should have bust you in your head but had not the salt uh, came out of me uh, I should have cursed you out uh, but folk are watching how you were turned upside down uh, but when you were turned upside down uh, something came out of you uh, or something that caused uh, it preserves uh, uh, it begins to make somebody thirsty. One pastor went to a town and said, ain't nobody here thirsty for God. We went through the city and the response was, well, the reason the people are not thirsty is because nobody in this city is salty. When you get salty, salt creates a thirst. And when the people of God truly becomes truly salty, people will become thirsty. They want to know more about Jesus. They want to know how you held your peace. Oh, there's nobody like him. Come on up, Ella Lindsay. I'm almost done here. The Bible says, ye are, you are the salt of the world. Oh, yes, you are. The ocean and all the water here is 97% salt. But God is saying that I have called you to be, turn it around, let it, I called you to be the salt of the world. I'm going to put salt in you so it can come out of you. You don't have to worry about it just be an empty vessel so I can fill you up with my salt you are the salt of the world you are the salt of the world salt in darkness do you know why the devil can't come back until the saints are pulled out of the world because we are the salt of the world we are the preservation we are preserving the world from the coming of the demons and the devil but when the Lord raptures the church out of the world the world will no longer have its salt it will never be a preservative it won't be safe and the devil gonna have his way some of y'all on jobs and a job is working cause you there and if you weren't there that job will close some of y'all in places where it's going fine because you were in the office and had you not been in the office the office would have collapsed because you are the salt of the earth everywhere you go oh you got to know who you are you are the salt not just for your fries not just for your hamburger but you're the salt of a dying world give God a praise somebody thank you Woo. so how do you release the salt let God do what he wants to do with you turn you from a place of uh, fleshly to spiritual for the carnal mind is enmity with God. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Let God flip you. Let God turn you. It's going to be all right. Because everything worked together for the good to them who love the Lord. And to them who are called according to his purpose. One way or another you're going to have a testimony. And you're going to say it was good that I was afflicted. That I may learn thy statutes. For these light afflictions which are just but for a moment. Working for us a for exceeding way of eternal glory I'll go through the pain I'll go through the test it's the salt that God has called for me I'm almost done too much salt can kill can't take too much salt when you dump it it can kill I have some dandelions in my backyard and about a year ago I took out some salt Lady didn't know how much I shook out, but I took out one of those big box lady, you know about that. I took out a lot of salt and I began to pour some salt and I took some, uh, also some rock salt and the salt killed the dandelions over four or five days. The salt killed, it killed the plant, weeds. 
too much salt will kill. When you witness, you can't put too much salt. You ain't saved, you're going to hell. You, you better watch out, that's too much salt. If you die, where you going to go? Heaven or hell. Oh, God. That's too much salt. You're going to run folk away. God. And I've been approached like that before. And people, hey, I'm already saved. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm already saved, sanctified. But some people, they will put too much salt, so much doctrine, and forget to tell about the love of Jesus. They just dump it. They just dump it. Yeah, you ain't saved. You ain't, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. You ain't been baptized. They just, they just, they just kill you. I don't want to go to your church. I don't want to be connected with you because you crazy. Too much salt. I was at a Red Lobster not long ago, and I was talking to one of the waitresses. I said, how's it going? Oh, I hate working on Sundays. Why? All these church people come up here. They're church people, man. They're so mean. They dressed up, but they're mean. I said, really? Oh, yeah, they're snappy and mean. I hate working on Sunday. Call me church people. I'm thinking, like, I'm church people. But all these church people is what they say. They dumping salt. Waitress, you ain't safe. You need to be safe. I'll take me a fish, take me a drink. And you need to get safe. You're working on Sunday. You don't need to be working on Sunday. You need to be. And they do that kind of stuff, and it turns them off. You dumping too much salt. That's why people don't want to come to church. People, they're so religious and all that is too much salt. But the Bible says with loving kindness, with loving kindness, have I drawn them. We don't know how to be kind anymore. We got scriptures and doctrine and we got all this stuff, you know, and we forget to tell them about Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. He cares for you. He went to the cross for you. He was so special. He wants you. He loves you. You start telling folk about hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. You know, where are you going to go? At? You can't scare people into salvation. They won't stay. I don't believe in trying to scare people. Oh, yeah, you, you definitely, you're going to be first class in hell. You're going to hell. You are going. You are going to hell. I tell you, you are. Where you look, where you dress, oh, yeah, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. What a turn off. That's not how the apostles preached the gospel. They talked about the death, the burial, and the glorious resurrection of Jesus is coming back. That's all. When's the last time you shared some salt? You got a cousin, you got a nephew, you got, a, you got an uncle, you got, a, you got a, maybe a, a brother or a sister, a parent, and you haven't told them about Jesus. During the pandemic, for about 33, about 33 months, we averaged about two people a month getting baptized, and many of them were filled. So we had about 66 people who, who, were, who were baptized for those 33 months. So on average, we were having about maybe two people coming to the Lord each, each month. I said, Lord, double the number. Give us four, four people a month. Our, our theme is winning souls for Christ. God, give us four per month. I want you to double the number. I said that in the beginning of September, the latter part of October. And that first Sunday, three people came down. Um, it was the Pope family. All three Popes came in. It was three people got baptized on that very Sunday. I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm raising my expectation to believe that Jesus is going to save people. We got real comfortable in our churches, and we got really happy, and we worship, and we like to preach, give God praise. But there's a dying world that's out there that needs to hear from us. I want somebody to tell somebody about Jesus and how much he loves you. It is your salt. You tell someone how much he cares. Don't you dump on them. Don't you dump on them, but you tell them how great God is. You sprinkle, there you see on the side. It's sprinkling just a little that God loves you and that God cares for you. I want to see souls saved. We can come here, shout, and have a good time, and that's good, that's good. But our calling is to tell others about Christ. 
All of us have testimonies. Some of y'all should have had a nervous breakdown. You should have been locked up. You should commit suicide. But had it not been for God, who kept you, he gave you a story to tell. You got a should have been, I should have been, I should have been, I should have been shot, I should have been shot, I should have been dead, I should have died from AIDS, I should, I should have been, I shouldn't be here. I had it not been for God on my side. That's your salt, baby. Tell your story. I'm gonna wrap this up. I told you how to get that salt out of that shaker. You, you, you gotta make sure that your, your speech is seasoned. Your answers and your responses are proper. That the motivation of what you say and how you say it is out of love and grace. And you are redeeming the times. You're making changes in the time. You don't know how powerful you are. There are some people who have no appetite to come into the house of the Lord, but you do. God has put a desire in you. I'm coming to the house of God. He's done things, something special for you because he calls you out of darkness into this marvelous light that you might show forth his glory. He didn't just save you to sit on a pew. He saved you to tell your story and to serve them who are coming out of this world. That's my message today. You are the salt of the earth. I don't care what your test may be. I don't care what your trial may be. You are the salt of the earth. What that mean? That means you are the influencer. You, you've been called to make a difference wherever you go. Well, how am I supposed to do that? It's how you talk. It's how you speak. It's how you react to calamity and problems and trauma. It's how you keep your cool. It's how you rest in God. How you tell folks that God got that, God got that, he's in control. It's how, because people are watching you. They're evaluating how you respond and are you responding like people in the world or are you responding like people who know Christ? You are the salt. Don't you let the devil keep you in your salt shaker. Open up your mouth and, and be influential wherever you go by what you say, by your answers, by your love, by the time that you give and the redeeming of the times. I want to call somebody to Christ. I want to invite someone to Christ Jesus today. He's called you to be salt. Woo! Pastor, I'm not ready to, to join this church. I'm not asking you to join the church. I may ask you later on, but right now, that's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to give your life to Christ. Pastor, I ain't, I ain't ready for religion. I'm, I'm not asking you to pick up religion. I may talk about that later. But right now, I'm talking about relationship. I'm talking about you giving your life to Christ. Is there anybody here today not giving their life to Christ? The process is very simple. You, you repent. You make a U-turn. You know, I'm turning. I'm turning my direction. I'm going a different way. That's a hard thing. He will help you to make your U-turn and stay on track. What are you? Come on, brother. Come on, sister. We call you to this altar to give your life to Christ. He can change your life. Please come. Be godly, sorrowful. Be godly, sorrowful. Please come. Please come. After repentance, you're baptized in water in the wonderful name of Jesus. You're baptized in water in Jesus' name. And on the screen there, you'll see a baptism. That's the next step. And we're prepared to baptize you right now. You've not been baptized in water in Jesus' name. I want you to come. It's a new beginning for you. Will you come? Will you come? After water baptism in his name, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And make you salty. She's going down in Jesus' name. She's going down in Jesus' name. What about you? She's going down in Jesus' name. Come 
on, brother. Come on, sister. He's calling for your life to change. He's called you to be influential through him. He's called you to be the salt of the world through him. Do you know who you are? You are the salt of the earth. Please come. No turning back. How do you get the salt out of the salt shaker? Jesus will help you. He will strengthen you. Somebody today, you please come. He will change your life. He's a game changer. He's a heart fixer. To follow Jesus, I have oh, I've decided, I made a decision to follow. No turning back. Where I'm going to go, there's no place to go. No turning back. I'm salt. I'm too salty to go back. No. One more time. One more time. Anybody else? One lady's going down. One guy's going down. What about you? What about turning around in Christ? I've decided to follow. Lord, make my prayers salty. Make my worship salty. Make my praise salty. Make my lifestyle salty. Put life in it. Make it influential. I have Decide. I made a decision years ago. There's no turning back. No. No turning back. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before our deacons come, I'd like to make an announcement. And before I baptism team comes starting the first Sunday in uh, October there will be a single service that starts at 10 uh, it starts at 9 o'clock the service starts the worship service starts at 1030 but our Christian education department starts at 9 o'clock we have some exciting classes every single mom every single mom we have a class for you and we have Dr. Sheila Powell Walker who will be teaching that class and her team, she has a team of people with you and they're going to give you resources. If you know a mom who's single and she needs some help, please have her to come to our class on, our class on, on the first Sunday in October. Please have, her, please have her to come. We're focusing on our single mom. Do you know that 70% of African American families are without they're not married. 70 percent, and the number is moving up high. Over 70 percent of our young African American women are without husbands in their home. They're doing it on their own. Some may have a boyfriend here and there, but for the most part, it's very traumatizing. Very traumatizing. If the person is unsaved, invite them. Well, Pastor Sheena in church, bring her, because this team is going to give them the tools for single moms to live effectively. So we have a class for single moms, single moms, all right? We also have a class on how to pray. If you are struggling with prayer or you just want to improve your prayer life or you don't have the Holy Ghost, we are inviting you to a, prayer, a class on how to pray. I will be teaching that class as well as Minister Michelle Bailey, and we have others who will be teaming up. We have a book that we're going to be reading, and we're going to talk about how to pray effectively. Prayer is a two-way communication. It's you talking to God and God talking to you. My messages are through prayer. When I pray, then God gives me a word. Like, pray this. Speak this. This is the message to do. This, I don't go on the internet. I'm not on YouTube trying to look for a message. God puts it in my spirit. I may do some research and follow up on some things, but God initiates a, a message in my spirit. That's through prayer. We want to, who taught you how to pray? Who, who taught you how to recognize the voice of God? Who taught you how to pray? Come to the class. We have a class on that. We have a class on victorious living. We have Evangelist, uh, Evangelist Oliver is teaching a class on uh, victorious living. And a lot of the women that are part of that class come to that class as well. We have class for our millennials, our young people, men's class. we got a lot of exciting classes that start on the first of Sunday in, in October. And I cordially invite you to be a part of that. 
Books are available $5 to 10 from $5 to 10 Those books are available in the bookstore. And we have Sister Natasha Williams, who's in the back. She's in the east corner of the church. She's raising her hand, and she'll give you more information about the classes when you come to the table. We also have handouts to tell you more about this class. I want everybody in the class. You know why? Because when you know better, you do better. You do better when you know better. Try it out. Go to class and see if this class is really going to help me. If it's not helping you, then move to another class. But I tell you, one of those classes will definitely be a blessing to you because we have dynamic teachers. We got good material, and I tell you, it will be a blessing to you. So we're going to resume our Christian education first Sunday in um, first Sunday in uh, in October. All of our new members, we have classes for. If you are a new member of Temple Church of Christ, there is a new members class being taught by Sister Carol Battle Bowens and her team. Uh, Sister Nidra is also assisting her as well. Sister Nidra Chris be a part of that. The men of God, Brother Michael Chris, it's going to be good, y'all. Please show up. Amen? So be a part of that. I've enjoyed preaching two Sundays. I, people say, aren't oh, you tired? I say, absolutely not. I get another chance to preach the same message over again. Yes! That's exciting to me, but you know what? But God is good. We need to go to uh, a, a Christian education. Pastor Stevens will only be preaching once on once, once, a t on once on Sunday, and we'll also have our Christian education as well. But thank you for all of you who have been very supportive in both of our services. Temple Church of Christ, Temple Church of Christ is a good church. And I thank God for this church. I thank God. I thank God. You know, I say that because we are, we are a praying church. We are a Bible reading church. We are a giving church. Uh, we don't have a conflict going on. People fighting the deacons and the ushers and the ushers fighting the, um, the hospitality committee. That's not going on here at Temple. At least I don't know about it. They don't tell me about it. But for us, I know it's not going on. We get along. We get along. In Jesus' name, we do. It's a good church. It's not the walls. It's not the pews. It's not the carpet. It's you. You all make this a great church. It's the personalities. And I thank God for you all so much. Give yourselves a hand for what God has done for you. Thank you. I really mean that. I really mean that. Now, we have a, a young lady who's going to be baptized. We thank God for her. And we're going to ask our deacons. I think you have a message, Sister... Valerie, you want to say you want, you want to make a mess? You want to, to give an announcement? She's going to come. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Sister Pat, have you already made your exit? Okay. Um, as you all know, Eric, Dr. Elder Griffin, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you come down, please, and make sure that slide is shown? As you all know, Lady D and Pastor Stevens had a 43rd anniversary. Amen. <laughs> Amen to our pastor and first lady on Thursday, September 15th. To God be the glory. And we just wanted to acknowledge them as part of Shepherd's Care uh, slash the uh, pastor's aid. We just wanted to stop and take a few minutes to just show them how much we love them. And on behalf of uh, the whole Shepherd's Care, uh, Lady D, come on up. Come on up, Lady D. So we thank you. We thank our team, uh, Liberta Sams, uh, Elder Griffin, and uh, Sister Pat McFarland. She was helping out today as well. And we just wanted to take a few minutes to show them how much we care for them. And this is coming from Temple Church of Christ, you all, because of the funds that you sow into the Shepherd's Care slash, um, thank you, Pastor's Aid Ministry. Eric. So once again, on behalf of the Temple Church of Christ to Pastor Ron Stevens, Lady Loretta Stevens, we present this elegant uh, bouquet of flowers that I'm sure Lady D will enjoy more than Pastor Stevens on your 43rd wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. And we also have gift cards to El Balago's uh, restaurant. And if you've ever been there, it's delicious. So on behalf of TCLC, that is for you all. Thank you. You want to say something? Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you. God bless you all in Jesus' name. That's all.
Man, thank you. Thank you so much for your love for us. Um, I'm, when, we, when, you, when they do things like this, when you all do things like this, it's very humbling. And I appreciate it very, very much for loving on us. Thank you so, so much. I promise you, I promise you, I'll never get the big head. I never will. Because everything that happens, I give God thanks for. I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. I give God the praise for everything that happens to me. I give God the thanks. So I thank God for how he's touched your heart to be a blessing, blessing to us. I mean, at this time now, we're going to call our deacons to come and to lead us in our offertory. Amen. Is Sister Freddie Cutlow here? Is she, is she here? Did she leave out? Is she here? Oh, she's in. Okay. We're going to have her to come later on, maybe talk another Sunday. She found a flyer about Temple Church of Christ. The reason why she's here at Temple Church of Christ is because she found a flyer. And she came to church and she was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we had another sister who found a flyer just on the ground. Lady D, is that right? Is she here? Sister Blue, is she here? So we, we got to get some tracks made. We got to get some tracks made. Because people are finding tracks in the laundromat. They found a track on the street. And they picked it up, come to Timber Church of Christ, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's a message there, amen, Evangelist Matthew. We got to get some tracks made, amen. I need your help with that as well, amen. Sister Goodlow, come on up. We can just take a short commercial. We're preparing for a baptism. Holly, will you share with us, you were out sharing how you heard about Temple Church of Christ. Give us the occasion. Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, and I'm out of breath. I heard him say my name. I ran up the steps. <laughs> um, in 2019, I was out with some friends of mine at a restaurant, and um, whew, I saw this flyer, and I said, "Ooh, convocation!" I said, "What's that?" I had no idea what it was or what they was talking about. So um, I started reading it. And then she told me that, I said, Temple Church of Christ. She said, yeah, you know that's an apostolic church. I said, get out of here. I'm looking for an apostolic church. So I came here. I talked to someone, and I wanted to be baptized. And I don't think I asked you, Pastor. I asked someone, could I get baptized here? So I didn't get baptized that Sunday, but I did the following Sunday. And when I was baptized, when I came up, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And I just said, thank you, Jesus. And I'm still here, and I'm so happy I'm still here. I love it, I love it, I love it, I am still here. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. So if anybody ever, that happens, ever happens to someone, just find out what it's all about and just go for the gold. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Give, give God a praise for her. Amen. So she got baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost in the pool. Amen. She was in the pool. Amen. And we and I believe that there are many people out in our communities now who want to know about Christ, and we got to share with them what Christ, uh, what Christ has done for us, and what He can do for them as well. Amen. I want, we're waiting for the person to be baptized. I want to offer a benediction, and then we're going to move forward. Father, we thank you for the service today. We thank you, Lord God, because you have declared that we are the salt of the earth. We are the seasoning of the earth. We are the preservative of the earth, God. We are the ones who cause life, Lord, in dead places. I pray, God, you wake us up to the knowledge of who we are. I pray, God, that we become witnesses wherever we go. I pray, God, you season our speech. I pray, God, we're ready to give a, the, a ready answer, a right answer to those, Lord, who ask us about you. I pray, Lord, for love, that when we speak, that they can sense love, Lord God, in compassion. And I pray, God, that we redeem the times, Lord, by the words of our lips and our corresponding behavior. Now, God, I pray that we not become professional churchgoers, but I pray, God, that we be those who turn the world upside down. 
I pray, Lord God, for witnesses. I pray, Lord, that we become salt of the earth, that we are influencers in our homes, on our jobs, Lord. Wherever we go, we are making a difference. And I pray, God, that you put the difference on the inside so that it comes from the inside out. I pray, God, that you affect our thought life. I pray, God, you impact, Lord, our conversation, Lord, and our habits and our character and allow us, Lord, to touch destiny, Lord God, through the word of God. Now, God, we thank you for all those who are in the sanctuary. We thank you, God, for all those who are on social media. And I pray, God, you will bless us to be salt wherever we go. Preserve us and keep us. And I pray, God, you give us safety as we leave this place. Allow us to arrive at our various destinations safely. And when we arrive, help us to find all things well. And we'll give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We're now under the direction, or we're prepared to do the conduct our baptism. Father, we thank you for this individual, this person who's come, Lord, to give their life to you. We thank you that she has responded to the call. And I pray, God, you bless her. I pray you strengthen her. I pray, God, you open up doors for her as never before. Now, Lord, bless her, comfort her, keep her, protect her. Fill her, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, God, and give her her mind to continue to walk with you until you return. Now, God, we give you praise and we give you glory for this soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. My dear sister Mary Evans, do you believe that Jesus died for you? Yes, I do. Do you believe that Jesus was buried for you? Yes, I do. Do you believe that Jesus rose from the grave for you? Yes, I do. And do you believe that Jesus is coming back for you? Yes, I do. My dear sister Mary Evans, based upon the confession of your faith and the confidence we have in the blessed word of life concerning the death, burial, and grand resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I now indeed baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Well, I asked God for four. That's four right there, that's four. We had three last Sunday, or two Sundays ago. This one makes four, at least four. So you all pray with me, Lord, save at least four. Save, let's set expectation and believe God the will bring them in. But you gotta witness, you gotta share, you gotta go out and tell someone about this glorious gospel. And let's believe that souls will come in They'll be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and they'll live victorious lives in Jesus' name. At this time now, we're under the direction of our, of our deacons. I brought my offering.